In that gap presentation, it's all about turning meaningless data into actionable insights. And what I mean with that is maybe with starting at looking at data. I just heard a brilliant talk about data. But I have a bit of a different view about data. We talk about big data. It's a hype word. But let's look at the facts of it. There is one place on planet Earth where I believe they create big data. It's the CERN in Geneva. They create, with their experiments, and here you see a screenshot of such an experiment, a terabyte a split second of data. That's what I call big data. All the other data we talk about is simply too much for me as a human ever to read it or ever to comprehend it, but it's relatively small data. And even though it's small, most of that data is never analyzed. Only 0.5% of the data that we create is ever analyzed. Now, folks, that is about as bad as buying a car for your company, taking that car from the dealership back home and throw away the key. That's an investment that Cornelius would never approve at iQuest, I'm sure. But that's the reality how we deal with data. 95% of data um, has never been touched beyond primary use. That is, I create it, I forget about it. That's zero return on investment. And I think it's about time to change this. And Skirr's only core mission is to provide a contribution to that riddle. And about that I want to talk. I want to talk in the next few minutes about how we industrialize insight generation in exactly three areas, sales, services and risk. Given the limited time I have, I will focus just on sales and services today. We do provide two solutions. Number one, create customer insights. That is to create one view where a, say, key account manager sees everything she needs to know about the customer relationship. The other solution is, we call that service insights. That is, create one view to stay on top in a service-related business. Now that sounds fancy-dancy, so let's spend a few minutes and looking that into detail. I brought a couple of examples along. First, customer insights. What we do there is we take data from multiple sources, CRMs, ECMs, any type of filer system, outside sources, be it the social media, be it paid and premium data sources. We aggregate that data, and most of that data has an unfortunate trait to it. It's of the unstructured kind. Unstructured information, as we all know, human mostly can read it, it's called books. But for computers, because it is with little schema, you can't do anything with it. You maybe can parse it by querying it full text mode. B-I-L-L -L equates to Bill. But Bill can be an American president with sexual problems. It but also can be something you receive at the end of a lovely evening in a restaurant. It's both called Bill. Now, what the heck? The computer is not able per se to differentiate that if there is no schema around it. And that's the riddle we solve. So we develop technology to be able to analyze concepts and to derive insights out of these concepts, out of that unstructured data. The time is now not here to explain all the details. My colleague Marcus and myself are here to ponder us with questions about how it exactly works. But so let's assume you have all that data from all these sources, you have started to aggregate that data, you have started to analyze that data, and to dimensionalize that data. What it then can produce is a 360-degree view of what you, as a company, do with them as your customer. Let me show that to you. It's an unbelievable privilege to be a young Swiss company, where we come from, to have been approached by Wells Fargo, America's, America's largest bank, to help them with exactly that type of problem. Wells Fargo grew massively during the financial crisis. Why? They were the bank with the best balance sheet, so the American government took their balance sheet to save a few, let's say, difficult assets. One of them was called Vakovia, 
Another one was called First Union. Today, Wells Fargo is bigger than ever. And um, as such, has a little problem. Just their wholesale banking division, their enterprise division, if you want so, has about 12 different CRMs. So if the bank today, and a key account person at the bank today wants to know what the bank did with, say, customer AC me, say around credit notes, the bank's core business, they don't know. Well, they do technically know. It's in one of those systems. But any one of you who has ever used Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics or Oracle Fusion knows what a lovely exercise it is to retrieve an old call note from just two days ago. It's pretty much awful. But there it is, the information, what the bank did with their customer about credit notes. So the bank approaches with exactly that riddle. Can you help us solve this? And that's what we did for them. So we took all these sources, these different CRMs, we packaged them all into one single source, started to analyze that data, started to dimensionalize that data, and what you get as a result is this. You see it here in a small screenshot, and on the next screen a bit bigger. I hope also in the back of the room you can read it. This is, by the way, not actual data. For good reasons, I'm not allowed to take that along. What you see here effectively is a panoptic view and then the dimensions from financials to business strategy to M&A to ROI to data centers to decision makers. And many more of these dimensions. And all of that in real time embedded, that's why I go back again, into the core CRM they use. Here in that demo system it is Salesforce, um, maybe known to one or the other of you. So in the moment you open up an account within that CRM system, our software provides an automatic, in real-time updated, 360-degree type view on all the other information that you don't normally have access to. In these dimensions, like you see here, and a few more, the key account manager sees automatically what she needs to know about what the bank has been doing in the last three months with customer XYZ. We call that customer insights. That's case one. Today, I want to talk about the second case is take exactly that same logic and apply it to the services, to ITSM, to IT service management, or generally speaking to operations management. All of us have smartphones and all of us have already had that unpleasurable um, experience of uh, the smartphone not really working for whatever reason, and then you call a call center, right? That in itself is not really a pleasurable experience because most telecom operators don't invest so much in call centers. They see that as a cost center, not as a business center. I know there are some people in telecoms here. Don't get me wrong on this. It is one of the areas I want to talk about an example where there is a lot of turning a cost into an economic benefit. How? If you call such a call center, you create a ticket. I don't know how many of you are familiar with solutions like ServiceNow, as an example, one of the leaders in that area, or Service Cloud, BMC Remedy. There are many ticketing solutions out there. Each of these tickets has the following type of, prefer, has the following type of, of, of sets. You have a timestamp. You maybe have someone tagging that ticket. And then you have a lot of free text, where the call center agent types in X, Y, Z, what's wrong? Now that text normally is then not analyzed. So the ticket agent simply takes that ticket and assigns it into the workflow that the ITSM system provides. And then things start to bubble up. That ticket maybe is qualified as level four. It's not really important till really, you know, the shit hits the van, then it's maybe qualified as level three. The thing bubbles up, then maybe it's eventually, you know, qualified as level number one. We saw that as an example at a global bank where an ATM network of a certain country was out of order for the better part of a morning. And the reason for it was an operation systems update overnight that unfortunately went wrong. Things can happen in complex worlds. And they did not notice that. Even though the tickets were all made, obviously people were complaining about the ATMs not working. 
But the people in the internal operations center did not realize that the tickets complaining about non-working ATMs actually had something to do with that systems upgrade they did over there. Siloed data, siloed organizations. I think some of you are familiar with this situation. So again, you have the situation that you have lots of different data silos with lots of different sets of data that you don't interconnect. And that's exactly what we do. So in that example, we took data, and maybe we can go to the example set from uh, Swisscom in Switzerland. So we took data from different silos, ITSM systems, knowledge-based systems, configuration management systems, and a few others. We started to aggregate that data. We started to analyze that data. We started to dimensionalize that data. And as a result, what do you get? Integrated into the existing ITSM system, you get this type of view where you suddenly see the whole picture of what happens around a ticket. Because if somebody complains about a non-working iPhone, it's probably not the only one that's complaining about that. What about if I could take that ticket and start to combine it with the ticket of the person that called five minutes ago about the same problem? Oh, and by the way, if we have that cluster of incidents, then we see it's actually a single event. If we see that, we can go back automatically and say, hmm, that type of event, we've seen that. We've seen that yesterday. And by the yesterday, John and Mary were the best to answer that. And by the way, this was their answer to that. Machines are extremely good at these type of riddles. So what you can do here is you can speed up, speed up the reply to such an incident, or what you normally call it, the mean time to resolution, by up to 30%. Now this does two things for a telecoms company like Swisscom or financial institutions where we did the same thing. Number one, it takes down cost massively for the cost center, which is the service and operations department. But number two, what it does more fundamentally, it does an incredible improvement of the competitive position of that business. Because that business makes use of its data, and that business makes positive use of its data for its customers. How that looks in real world, let's look at a few screenshots. What you see here is a mock of a BMC remedy system, where to the left you see actually a ticket. The ITSMP and ITSMP dates today wouldn't have been imported today, it reads, and that's all it does. Now this is PowerPoint, we all know, that's not as fun as a live demo, but I'm bad at doing live demos here just on stage without any computer support, so we do with that PowerPoint presentation for the moment. What we have done now, automatically, created a 360-degree view here to the right of it, where you see in one go, based on that simple analysis of that text, what other major incidents were there around. So, has there been a similar incident in the past? Has there been, by the way, maybe a customer order associated with that? Has there been solutions, documents that describe that problem already around? So for the call center agent, instead of frantically looking for a solution across eight different systems, the person has everything in one place. That can take the look of such a 360 degree view, where you have next to the incident, the orders that go with that, that you have maybe also external news that relate to this, external news articles, again, all in one place. And then, obviously, you can go one step further. You can start to automate that process. If, with a high enough degree of probability, you identified the incidents and collated them into one single event, with that type of, say, digital fingerprint, you can go back and check, actually, for similar solutions. And if you found similar solutions, you found who actually answered those solutions best previously. So what you can do now, suddenly, is you can do automated solution recommendation even go all the way to actually self-service that. 
So in the moment the tick comes in, you can post that back to the person inputting that tick and say, hey, understanding you, we hear you, here is possible solution scenarios. Now you tell me, other solutions do that today. Yes, they do it, but they do it on a keyword base. And as we just learned in the first part of my presentation, bill and bill might mean different things. So the trick is actually do more of data and analyze this piece, this unstructured piece. Given the time, I want to move on and come to an end. What you then can do now, not only on a call center element, call center level, but if you go one step up to the operations management element, you can start to actually traverse that data and start to compute the few things out that were hidden before. As an example, if you see that incident number coming up and start to put that into one single event, if you start to see how that historically developed, you can start to compute out risk scores. You can start to compute out actually how the overall health of your systems are based on data that so far you have not touched, but which explain much better than any other data set available what the true state of your system's health is. What you see here is a simple, easy screenshot of such a thing, where you, as an example, can create a heat map based on that across all your systems, based especially on that unstructured type of data that has been hidden before. The result is obviously from an operational point of view, an ability to simply go and see, oh, actually here in that red part, we do have a problem. Let's look at that. Here in the red part, there is probably something cooking. And at the end, that's what the operations managers are probably measured against, to keep the daily insanity at the possible lowest level. The lowest level possible. It's a complex world, things go wrong. Make sure that the insanity stays on an acceptable level. A lot of what we have seen here in the last 15 minutes, we have actually built together with iQuest. And I want to explain that towards the end very briefly. The architecture of our solution is threefold. We have an ability to import data. That's not really special. A lot of other people do that. There are ETL systems out there. The next piece is a bit special. We start to enrich that data in manifold ways. At the end of the day, our computers are no smarter than your computers. It's all about creating that schema around data to make it available for computing. That happens in that enrichment step. Then we build a bit of intelligence into the adaptive search layer, where we create those, I call them digital fingerprints. And at the end, what you saw me doing is, we didn't replace any existing system, we complemented systems by deeply integrating into systems. So we offer that platform to integrate knee seamlessly into any other third-party system. Together with iQuest, we did a lot of work around the data loading piece. We did a lot of work around that enrichment piece. That KEE piece doesn't stand for the Korean Engineering Institute. It stands for known entity extraction. And um, we did a lot of work with iQuest on that. And last but not least, we also worked together with you guys on the integration into what you saw at the very first piece, the Salesforce access layer. If I need to draw a summary, and Liana, with um, her team, we work very closely, um, Mia and Jonat, to draw sort of a conclusion of that collaboration, we enjoy very much working with you guys. I take the privilege at this stage here, going a few seconds over my allotted time, to say thank you to you, Liana, to the team, Cornelius, who did the original introduction. We sometimes have a bit of an issue with the structure and process you guys follow. This is a startup, and things change. We just learned that in the previous presentation as well, but we understand why you do that. I've run a consultancy company myself, I understand why I do that. On the other end, uh, we enjoy very much working with you guys because the advanced engineering capabilities of your Fox are really outstanding and what we appreciate most and have seen in some of these um, projects we did together, um, the contribution in terms of 
having an own ID and coming to my technical colleagues and say, hey, hmm, there is a better solution to that. That's what I appreciate most about our work together. So I say thank you here, and uh, I say thank you for the time you spent with me um, by bridging the gap to the coffee break. Data-driven customer success, it's what's all about in a connected world. Thank you. Thank you.